See, we're draining a hot tub. Now, the customer already drained half of it, so I can't really show you that well. So, there's three things you can use. You can use a siphon, which I'll link on the bottom. Siphon there, you just go like this, and the water goes all out. And then the second way is a submersible pump. And I'll link this on the bottom too. Get one that's a zero clearance, so it goes right on the bottom. And then the hose goes there. And there's another way of doing it, siphoning it, is just with the hose. And uh, when it's running, you just stick it into the, the jet and you get the water pushing through it on the other end. And then that's it, you just put it on the bottom, the siphon's all the way out. So we're going to use a uh, submersible pump. Yeah, this pump's good for getting the seats off. Now this sub pump's great because you don't have to, because we're just shutting it down, it doesn't really matter if there's that much uh, water on the bottom, on the seats. You're just taking out as much water as you can. So, you know, this is a blower I use for blowing out the lines, and uh, actually it's good for blowing the lines from pools. So it's going to be loud, but uh, you go around and going in there. I do a short video on it. So you go around, go around to uh, all the seats and do that. Every jet. Start from the top. Start from the top and then go down. Okay, so we're gonna vacuum it out. Now I'm gonna use a shop vac to vac it all out once you blow it. Now, um, I've modified this hose. It's an extra hose too, but I've modified it um, to kind of suit our needs and, and uh, we do so many of them. So it's just easier on me. So I will link uh, um, on the bottom there my, my equipment that I use. So when you're vacuuming it all out, just vacuum every nook and cranny. Even the, you know, this, there's going to be some spray and stuff to vacuum that stuff up. So we vacuumed it all out. Now it doesn't have to be spotless. If you want to do it spotless, do it spotless. It's a little bit easier in the, in the spring, but we're going to end up opening this one up. So we just vacuum it fast. We know we have to clean it out really well. So, and yeah, and then when we put antifreeze in, we leave, you can see it's still a lot of moisture in there, but we're going to close it back up for the winter. Um, now if you have time as a homeowner to leave this, leave the cover open for a while, you drain it out and uh, leave it open if it's not winter. So all this moisture that's in there, it's all this moisture, it would dry up. It's a little bit better for you because you know, you're going to get, you're going to get a little bit of mold in there and stuff because the moisture, it's nothing you can do about it. You're going to get, so here we're going to use a funnel. Now I like this funnel here. I'll link it on the bottom for a funnel. I like this one here. So I use two bottles for the average size. So I start from the top. Not a lot for each one, but just a little bit. For your filter area, I put actually a lot more because that's where your pumps are going to be. Right. So you go around and put every single one of them. Here we finish up uh, anti-freezing, so it doesn't matter if you have some leftover like that. Um, now, if you're a warmer area, make sure all the moisture is all out, like in your tub. Leave it for a couple days, let it let it dry out. That's good. With us in the in Canada here.
just for this video uh, I'm gonna open up the side panel to show you. so this one here we have pump two and you got pump one which goes through the, the heater element so you got that one here there. yeah normally a wet head breaks um, but if you feel like you have to go underneath like this what I would do is uh, disconnect the top pump and then you can pour your antifreeze in there. You can kind of lift that pipe up and uh, you can blow the lines out that way and then blow the lines down from that and then put your antifreeze in that way. The front, this normally where it breaks is the front right there. If it freezes, that spot right there on either side and then the manifolds. Now we've already um, take care of that. So usually a big seat like with big cluster of jets like that. Normally on the bottom of, on the back side of it somewhere, they'll have like a, a manifold that um, goes to one pipe. So all those little ones there, they go right into one pipe underneath there. So when we put antifreeze in there with a funnel, we're trying to get that into the manifold because that's where they break. Okay, so we've already taken, we've blown the lines out, we emptied it, that's a good step. Blown the lines out. And then put antifreeze. We put a lot more antifreeze than should, but um, it's it's good. The side, because the discharge is on the other side. So what you could do is disconnect the front and kind of push it back. If there's any room there, push it back. So this is the reason why I do the antifreeze from the other other side. And then uh, there's the heat tube there too. And we'll see how much water is in there anyway. We're gonna we're gonna disconnect that right now. So I just did, I did that a little bit with a tool. Now this is what you would disconnect. You would disconnect that, both sides. Now I wouldn't disconnect it all the way because for some reason the pipes are gonna um, shrink a bit. So it's harder to get back on. So we're, we undid that pretty good. Getting the water in that a little bit. Just a little bit of water. Oh, I feel like, oh yeah, antifreeze came all, you can see all pink. So it did work. So we've tested this for the last uh, 10 years on how to do this. And we have, like I said, we have two, so many hot tubs that are um, sunk in the ground and came here. So tested years and years of testing and even if you disconnect that pump right there um, there's gonna be a little bit a little bit of antifreeze in it as long as you get a little bit of antifreeze in there so even if the, there's water I know there's gonna be water in there so as long as I've got antifreeze to it um, it won't freeze solid you get like a slushy like a margarita so to recap we drained it with a sub pump you can use a hose you can use um, any type of siphon, drained it all out, took as much water as you could out of it, blow the lines, okay, blow all the lines, every single thing, blow the lines, blow the lines, and then vacuum it out again, okay, take the water out, if a lot of water comes out, then you have to use that sub pump again, so vac it out, and then uh, I used two antifreeze for just, you know, because I put lots of antifreeze in, and then the funnel, um, and it does work, I'm telling you. So we've been doing I haven't seen anybody else do the same thing. Um, they usually disconnect the bottom there. But again, we've tested this for the last 10 years with a funnel. And, and uh, we just use gravity and speed. Um, so we like to have, get that, make sure it's going through the tops. The tops of all these. You put in every single one. Now, all these jets are, this person has jets missing. But it's a lot easier for us to do it. But I don't need to take the jets out. But just make sure they're open. So before you close, just make, if you know all the jets are going to be open, um, then you can put an antifreeze down it. Okay? So up high, these are all connected. That cluster, these are all connected. So you want to get it all down. Same as there. Same as there. This is going to be all... The pipe's going to go all straight down. Okay? Now on the bottom, same thing, you just, uh, you can take those screens off, but I noticed there was a rusty bolt on that one, so if you go to take that off, either have a new one, um, 
Yeah, see, you screw that in the middle and then uh, it might break off. So I'll just leave that for now. I've got two missing here. She doesn't have any kids, so uh, I suggest keep getting new ones.